Elon Musk and NASA recently made headlines by announcing a groundbreaking finding on Mars that will alter our understanding of the Red Planet forever. There is no doubt that NASA is obsessed with Mars and has sent many rovers to examine its surface. Elon Musk, who plans to establish a long-term presence on Mars, has also been paying close attention to the findings of NASA's rovers. The Perseverance rover and its tiny helicopter companion, Ingenuity, have already landed on Mars. What did NASA's Perseverance find in the geologically rich regions of Mars, and how might that information impact you? Stay tuned as we bring you the astonishing discoveries revealed by Elon Musk and NASA on Mars that have stunned the whole space business. On August 7, 1996, the press corps converged on NASA's headquarters in Washington, D.C. The focus of the audience was not on the scientists seated in a row in NASA's auditorium, but on a little clear plastic box on the table in front of them. Inside the box was a velvet pillow, and like a crown jewel, a rock from Mars was sitting on it. The scientists said that they had found signs of life inside the meteorite. Daniel Golden, the head of NASA, was thrilled to say that the day was unbelievable. Scientists said that the rock was made on Mars about 4.5 billion years ago and stayed there until 16 million years ago, when it was probably thrown into space by an asteroid. The rock had been floating around the inner solar system for 13,000 years before it finally landed in Antarctica. In 1984, some geologists who were riding snowmobiles near Allen Hills saw it sitting on the ice and brought it in. Researchers at Houston's Johnson Space Center, led by David McKay, found that the chemical makeup of the rock, called ALH-84001, was strange. Inside, there were many different minerals and carbon compounds, most of which are made by microbes on Earth. Some bacteria can make something called magnetite, which is a magnetic iron oxide. These crystals were also there. Also, McKay showed the crowd an image of the rock taken with an electron microscope. The image showed chains of globules that were very similar to chains made by some Earth bacteria. Since then, NASA has sent a number of successful missions to Mars. Now, the space agency is getting ready for a manned mission to Mars that is expected to take off in the 2030s. No one knows exactly where the Mars landing will happen on that mission, but a future space colony on the Red Planet would do well to start out in the cold, high latitudes. Mars, like Earth, has four different seasons because its axis is tilted. The red planet's highly elliptical orbit also has an effect on its seasons. When Mars is farthest from the Sun, the southern hemisphere faces away from it. This makes the southern hemisphere have much colder winters and much hotter summers than the north. As things stand, the surface of Mars doesn't look like a place where life could ever grow. The climate of Mars is very dry and very cold, with temperatures as low as negative 220 degrees Fahrenheit. It has such a weak atmosphere that it can't protect the planet from the dangerous ultraviolet rays that come from space and kill everything that lives on Earth. But Mars, which is as old as Earth, might have once been a better place for people to live. The gorges and dried lake beds on the planet show that there was once water there. Scientists think there was enough carbon dioxide in the early Martian atmosphere to have warmed the surface of the planet through a greenhouse effect. That means that when Mars was young, it was a lot like Earth. If Mars had been warm and wet for much longer than the last few million years, life might have been able to start there. It's possible that when conditions on Mars' surface got worse, all life there died. There might be fossils in the area, though. Based on what we know about microbes on Earth that can live from miles below the surface, it's possible that life could have survived below the surface of Mars. Now, moving on from the Martian climate. The Perseverance rover has just found the most interesting thing on Mars so far. With a lot of hard work, scientists were finally able to get samples from the site of an old river delta. The rocks there show how Mars has changed over time. Some of the rocks have the most organic matter that the rover has found so far, according to NASA scientists. There are minerals in the organic matter that go with sulfates. These could hold clues about places on Mars that were once able to support life, and the microbes that might have lived there. The rocks that look good in the strange landscape of the delta are shown in new pictures. These important samples could help us answer the most important questions in the universe. Are we alone? The igneous rocks on the crater floor, which were made when magma cooled and hardened, are very different from the sedimentary rocks in the delta. 
This juxtaposition tells us a lot about the geological history after the crater was made and gives us a lot of different samples. For example, we found a sandstone with grains and pieces of rock that were made far from Jezero Crater. We also found a mudstone with organic compounds that were very interesting. A big, interesting rock about three feet wide is called Wildcat Ridge. It probably happened when mud and fine sand settled in a saltwater lake that was drying up billions of years ago. On July 20th, the rover scratched the surface of Wildcat Ridge so it could look at the area with a high-tech scientific tool called Sherlock, which stands for Scanning Habitable Environments with Raman and Luminescence for Organics and Chemicals. The analysis done by Sherlock shows that the samples have a group of organic molecules that are close to the sulfate minerals in space. When sulfate minerals are found in layers of sedimentary rock, they can tell us a lot about the watery places where they are formed. Organic molecules are made up of many different compounds that are mostly made of carbon and usually also have atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. They can also contain nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, among other things. Some of these molecules are the chemical building blocks of life, even though they can be made by chemical processes that don't need life. People think that these molecules could be a biosignature if they're present. A biosignature is a substance or structure that could be evidence of life in the past, but it could also have been made without life. In 2013, NASA's Curiosity Mars rover found signs of organic matter in rock powder samples, and Perseverance has found organics in Jezero Crater before. But unlike the first find, this one was made in a place where sediment and salts used to build up in a lake in the past, when conditions were right for life to have existed. When the Sherlock instrument looked at Wildcat Ridge, it found the most living things of anywhere it had looked so far on the mission. The sand, mud, and salts that make up the Wildcat Ridge sample were put there a long time ago, in a place where life might have been able to grow. It's important that the organic matter was found in sedimentary rock, which is known for keeping fossils of ancient life on Earth. No matter how good our instruments are on Perseverance, we won't know more about what's in the Wildcat Ridge sample until the agency's Mars Sample Return campaign brings it back to Earth and studies it in detail. The first rock sample for the NASA ESA Mars Sample Return campaign was taken by Perseverance in September of 2021. The rover has not only taken samples of rock cores, but also one sample of the atmosphere and two witness tubes. All of these things are stored in the rover's middle. Geologically, the samples that the rover already has are so good that the team working on the rover is thinking about leaving some tubes near the bottom of the delta in about two months. The rover will keep exploring the delta after it puts the cache down. Lori Leshen, who runs NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said, I've spent a lot of my career studying how people live on Mars and its geology, so I know firsthand how important it is for science to bring back a carefully chosen set of rocks from Mars to Earth. It is really amazing that we will only have to wait a few weeks to send out the interesting samples from Perseverance and a few years to bring them to Earth so scientists can study them in great detail. We will learn so much. Astrobiology is a big part of Perseverance's mission on Mars, and one of its goals is to store samples that might show signs of microbial life from a long time ago. The rover will study the planet's geology and climate in the past. This will make it possible for people to visit Mars. It will also be the first time that rocks and soil from Mars will be brought back to Earth and stored. In the future, NASA and ESA will work together to send spacecraft to Mars to pick up these sealed samples from the surface and bring them back to Earth for a closer look. Mars 2020 Perseverance is part of NASA's plan to explore from the Moon to Mars. This includes sending people on Artemis missions to the Moon, which will help them to get ready to go to Mars. JPL, which is run by Caltech for NASA, built and now runs the Perseverance rover. The goal is to look for signs of life on Mars and uncover the true nature of the Martian environment. If you find a place that could harbor life but is empty, that tells you something. Why is there no life when there could be life? The answer makes us want to know more. Only time will tell us the true reason, and we can just wait and watch what Perseverance finds for us. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, how do you rate Elon Musk's plan to invade Mars and start colonization on the Red Planet? Do you think it could become habitable one day? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. 
We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.